All right, we are continuing talking about circular motion, but we're going to talk about um, <clears throat> two examples uh, of, of really how we can find all of the forces or all of the velocities or all of the accelerations involved in going in some pretty standard circular motion examples. So the first one is a, a flat or a horizontal circle. Do it that way, slash, flat, slash, horizontal circle. So let's say, well, the nice thing about this, when we have our flat or our horizontal circle, if we have an object that is moving in a circle, that's the general direction of it. Um, looking at any given point, whatever force is responsible for making us go in that circle points towards the middle. And for a horizontal or a flat circle, uh, that's the only force acting on it. So if we are um, spinning a mass on a string, that force is equal to tension. And so if we draw the free body diagram of the object spinning with the string, we have tension pulling this way. The sum of my forces equals the mass times the acceleration. And so the tension is equal to mv squared over r. Because we're going in a circle, we have a centripetal acceleration. If we're talking about, let's say, a car on a track, and we looked at this in class, for a car on a track, that force responsible for making us go around in the circle um, is friction. And for that car, let's say we're talking about this spot, for that car, looking at the free body diagram, we have friction this way, the normal force up, and the weight down. And this is with the velocity, let's say, into the page. So the car is driving into the page. We're looking at it from behind here as it drives away. Um, and in this case, we know that the normal force is equal to the weight. So that's my only force. And my acceleration is that way, again, towards the center of the circle. So uh, mass times acceleration is going to be equal to, in this case, the friction. So mv squared over r is going to be equal to, for friction, mu times the normal force, which is mu times mg. And we can solve this for v, mu, mg, or r, uh, depending on what the case calls for. But flat circles, horizontal circles, very simple. Only one force acting on them that really matters. Everything else will cancel out. And we really just have the one force causing our centripetal acceleration. The problem is finding out what that is. Things get a little bit more complicated when we talk about a vertical circle with gravity. So we have a vertical circle. We'll call it weight, with weight. So this time we have a vertical circle, pretend. Okay. And so we're going to look at two very important points, the top and the bottom. So for our mass, we know that there's always going to be weight, and that weight is always going to be pulling down. Now, to go in this circle, first off, let's assume one thing. Let's assume a constant speed. And, and while we're talking about this, constant speed does not mean the velocity is not constant. It has a constant magnitude. But a changing direction. That's why the acceleration is not equal to zero. We're going around a circle with a constant speed. Now, 
if we're spinning it with a string, we know that at the bottom, the tension is going to pull up towards the center of the circle. And at the top, the tension is going to pull down. So let's look at the top and bottom as special and separate cases uh, that deserve our time because this is a little bit different because the weight's always going to pull down. Uh, but things are different at the top and the bottom as far as the tension is concerned. So if we redraw that free body diagram, here's our mass. Okay, We have the weight down, which never goes away. And we have the tension down. And at the top, because of that, both forces are down and the center of the circle is down. I know that the acceleration has got to be down. So in, in this case, uh, my net force is equal to mass times acceleration. And here, my net force is those two forces added together. Tension plus the weight is equal to mass times the acceleration. And since we're going in a circle, that's a centripetal acceleration. Now, tomorrow, hopefully, you'll have an opportunity to play with the ball on the string. But while we're here talking about the top, let's rewrite this. Tension plus the weight is equal to mass times the velocity squared over r. That's what the centripetal acceleration is. So when we're spinning in this vertical circle with weight, with gravity actually pulling down and acting on this thing, um, we can have a minimum speed. Okay. So at the slowest we can possibly go, The tension, sorry, the tension is going to be equal to zero. If we go any faster than that, we're going to have to have tension in the string to continually pull our mass down because it's going so fast it wants to be flung out so far. But if we go at the slowest possible speed, this tension will be zero and the only force pulling down on it at the very top is going to be weight. That's how we find our slowest possible speed. Now, this is an important thing for, let's say, a roller coaster designer who doesn't want you to fall out of the roller coaster at the top or experience a downward force at the top. He's going to make sure that you're going fast enough to be pushed up into your chair and no, no slower than that. But it's important to know that at the slowest speed or at the minimum speed that you're going to go, the tension in the string, the normal force holding you into your seat, is going to be equal to zero. That's a big deal. In that case, at the slowest speed, then this goes away and you have mg equals mv squared over r. And at the slowest possible speed, your centripetal acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity. But that's only at the case at the slowest speed. If we're going any faster than that, we're going to have tension. That's what happens at the top. The bottom is the thing that seems to trip students up the most. At the bottom, we know for a fact that the weight pulls down. And at the bottom, the string can only always pull up. And students are tempted to say, looking at this, that the tension is equal to the weight. That is not true. You can't say that the tension is equal to the weight here because we're accelerating. And it's tempting to say that the tension is equal to the weight. But again, oh, we can't. Because we're accelerating. Well, we're moving in a circle. That means the acceleration, one, is always there. And it's always towards the center. So at the bottom, the center of the circle is up. My acceleration is in the upward direction. So when we're at the bottom of this circle, <coughs> tension is the bigger force. And if we're going to redraw our free body diagram with just one force, it's going to be tension minus the weight. And my centripetal acceleration is up. So net force equals mass times acceleration. Tension minus the weight here 
is going to be equal to mass times centripetal acceleration. So tension minus the weight is equal to, sorry, mv squared over r. This is a different situation than what's going on at the bottom. Moving at the same speed, what this tells me is that the tension at the bottom has to be greater than the tension at the top. Because the tension at the bottom is doing two things. One thing that it's doing is beating the weight. The second thing that it's doing is providing centripetal force. At the top, it's the combination tension plus the weight. It's the combination that's giving us a centripetal force. At the bottom, it's only the tension. And that's only one of the things that the tension is doing. So the tension must be greater at the bottom. Here's how you find it. Tension will be smaller at the top, and at its smallest, at our slowest, that tension will be equal to zero. We're going to work some examples of this in class, but this is pretty much what we're talking about.